When you have a crisis of some kind, a health emergency, an auto accident, a bad fall, you call 911. Broward's serious failures in call response involve unanswered calls. According to County Commission report, 12% went unanswered last year. The problems appear to be a, so a shortage of personnel and a clash about who should be running the 911 call center. Right now, the county is in charge of the system, but the Broward Sheriff's Office does the daily operations. The Broward Commission is set to address that conflict when it meets on Tuesday. Lamar Fisher is Broward's brand new mayor, got the gavel this week for the next year. He is a county commissioner for District 4, most of Northeast Broward. New mayor, welcome. <laughs> Are we your first interview as the new mayor of Broward County? Love that. Hey, thank you, Michael and Glenna, for having me this morning to be able to talk about this, this particular issue. Mayor Fisher, we're glad you are with us. Well, we need not recall to you, you have heard chapter and voice, I'm sure, from some of your constituents how frustrated and angry uh, some people are about how shoddy the 911 system is in Broward. How are you going to fix it? Well, first of all, I want to thank the media actually for bringing it to our attention several months ago in which we had some horrible, horrific um, things happen with the 911 system. So we were able to immediately engage the Broward Sheriff's Office and the county to see how we can immediately, on a short-term basis, fix that problem. And that's what we exactly did. We found out that we had a tremendous amount of shortage of call takers in our system. So we obviously, Broward Sheriff's Office runs that system for us. As you said, the technology side is the Broward County side. I wanted to immediately fix that issue. So we uh, acquiesced to the sheriff's request and first gave them $4 million to do some additional hiring, increase pay, increase benefits. And then this year we increased the budget $11.5 million so we can fill those positions to be able to answer the calls that are so needed. There were about 80 positions that need to be filled and our latest numbers were about 11.5% vacancy right now. So, Mayor, um, credit where credit is due. The people at the Sun Sentinel actually did that expose last spring, yeah. and that had resulted in the commission, you commissioned a study, a Fitch study, that came back. Um, I guess, I don't know whether it was a leak this week, but we're glad it did because it's now public before <laughs> the uh, commission gets it on Tuesday. But we can report from that report, <clears throat> 130 pages worth, um, some pretty concerning uh, details, response times, the technology of the system, the facilities, uh, everything downhill for the last six years. And to be fair, it wasn't all bad, but but we focus on those things that do need fixing, of course. Yeah. Um, one really glaring thing in September, there were only nine days in September where 90% of the calls were actually answered in 15 seconds or less in an emergency, that's eternity. Uh, the Broward Sheriff's Department wants control, and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's Public Safety Commission advises giving total control to BSO. What say you? Well, this is coming Tuesday, as you stated, that will, the commission will be discussing this in a very detailed manner. The good news is that the Fitch report, in which we actually paid for as a county, provided some recommendations. Again, this is a draft report. We'll see the final report at the end of December of this month. And we look forward to that. But on a high level basis, they have uh, provided about 10 different areas in which we need to improve, which a lot of it we already are doing. But more importantly, the discussion will be uh, with our board is whether we do turn everything over to the Broward Sheriff's Office. Do we take everything back? Everything is on the table for discussion this coming Tuesday. Yeah. Well, we have seen in some past meetings where this has been discussed, uh, raised voices. Your colleague, Michael Udine, former Broward mayor, and Sheriff Gregory Tony were pretty much shouting at each other. Uh, and uh, how are you going to kind of keep the lid on things Tuesday? What do you expect? Well, that was actually Commissioner Bogan, not uh, former Mayor Michael Udine, that had that uh, discussion with the sheriff. But I've actually spoke to both individuals and said this is going to be meaning that we're going to be professional and we're going to be courteous to each other. So I, I have every confidence uh, in my board and the sheriff uh, that we will have a genuine conversation because at the end of the day, we have to collaborate together to make the system better for our community. And so we need to work collectively to make that happen. So hopefully everything will go smoothly on, on Tuesday. 
you know, Mayor, um, as the as Broward's commission goes, you are a vote on the commission. And um, as mayor, though, you get to sit in that chair and answer our questions. And sometimes they can get pretty pointed. Um, sure. But at that meeting that you were talking about, Commissioner Bogan, after that, I think it was, he actually has mm -hmm. recommended Gregory Tony's removal as Broward sheriff over this very mm -hmm. issue. Is mm -hmm. and so the pointed question to you, the mayor, is that something that you would support or oppose? I actually think it was not the removal of the sheriff, it was actually to remove the Broward Sheriff's Office from handling the staffing and the communications component and take everything back, technology and staffing together. So I, that, I'm, that a, I'm actually gonna, I, I will um, absolutely did, fact did check I that, that, but I think I the, that, quote, the quote that we have is removal of Gregory Tony. Um, but hopefully, um, like, let's see if we can get a fact check on that. But I have that quote. My impression was he meant the sheriff. I think that might have been a heated moment at that particular time. So I did not see our board uh, going in that direction in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, Mayor Fisher, um, I want to cite a story that our colleague Jeff Weinzer here at Local 10 News did this past week which was just heartbreaking. I guess you saw it. It involved a Hollywood resident named Delroy Burgess. October 31st, he got a call from his wife, 65 years old. They've been married 35 years. She was having trouble breathing. He rushed home and found her in distress. And he called 911. There was no answer. He waited a couple of minutes, called again. There was still no answer. There's Mr. Burgess there in the video. And eventually, 14 minutes later, uh, a Hollywood police officer and fire rescue showed up and tragically, uh, Mrs. Burgess died. Uh, I mean, this is just unspeakably sad and totally unacceptable, I'm sure you would agree. I agree, Hyperson Michael, and first of all, our prayers uh, go out to, to him and his family uh, during these um, healing hearts that are needed for this horrific event that happened yeah. and, it, and it should not happen. And what's also interesting, what I won't actually tell folks is that please, when you do call, please stay on the line. A lot of the abandoned calls, the, about 61% of the abandoned calls actually are folks that do not stay on or five seconds or less. So we want to make sure that please stay on the line the best you can in order to get that service. But this has to be corrected, Michael, without a doubt. So what is it, you know, in, in the minute that we have left, what, from what you know, because you have a lot of insider knowledge with the process that's transpired over the past year, wh what is a big priority fix? I believe the, the big priority fix is being able to, obviously, and we're doing that with our updating of our Viper 7, which is to be able to automatic call back, number one. Uh, number two is to be able to track that cell phone. 80% of the calls now to 911 are via cell phone. And so the technology has to be updated. We have already uh, um, have Motorola's proposal and have accepted that proposal to make that rapid response happen so we can actually track not only the police officers and the firefighters folks on the radios, but able to sell the 911 call on a cell phone that we can actually ping that individual so we can see exactly where they're at. Yeah. Mayor Lamar Fisher of Broward County, we are so glad to be able to speak with you. Congratulations. You know, you are the, the man in charge for the next year, you know, at the helm in Broward. And uh, good luck with fixing the 911 system. Thanks, Mayor. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you.